uh, with uh, Pricewaterhouse Cooper's research from Moscow to Sao Paulo. Let us introduce ourselves first. My name is Vadim Hrapun. I'm partner of PwC and, uh, Business Development. And my colleague is Hazem Gadal. Uh, he's the leader of the global practice of PwC uh, for um, public sector and uh, local administration sector. How we want to uh, structure our briefing? Well, you have seen the reports. Probably they are here on the table. You can take them. And we wanted to do it as follows. So. We'll have uh, 10 minutes for uh, some short uh, um, summary. Then we have a session half an hour uh, where we have uh, more time for more detailed presentation. So now we'll present the summary, uh, some idea and maybe some assumptions uh, and the story how we uh, how this research uh, happened to be. So. What it was before that. We have uh, so called uh, G7 cities, and at the same time, we have fast growing economies or emerging uh, economies, E7, uh, that are uh, presented here in this slide. So, to uh, bring them up, bring them all together, we have carried out this research, and I'll tell about it later. So what's the paradigm of uh, what is going on? I believe that you have already come across uh, in this or that research with the fact that actually the emerging economies are uh, getting uh, higher positions all the time. Uh, there is a research saying that uh, until 2020, Russia will um, uh, outstrip Germany and China by 2017 uh, will uh, come forward before the U.S. and will become the leading economy. So basically, if we take the groups G7 and E7, by 2016, 2017, uh, taking the um, general GDP, they will, uh, the E7 will be in the four. And naturally, one of the m main drivers of this growth are cities, not necessarily the capitals. Um, so, but there are some basic main cities that are important. Just a couple of words about our research. There is a big amount of research, and there are some se uh, separate public publications. Uh, there is a magazine contain, uh, containing about 107 researches, so that there are different researches there. And our research uh, is a complex research covering all the aspects of the ub, uh, uh, urban aspects of city development. 60 indicators, 10 categories, quantitative and qualitative. Uh, everything comes from the open source. And of course, it's, uh, it has an applied value because uh, city administrations can use it to uh, uh, to work on their policies. And I want to highlight the fact that we use uh, PwC uh, methodology here. That's the Russian translation of the previous report. Moscow also took part in this research. But as, as I've said, it's 27 cities, and it, it, it can't be really compared with what we have now. The research we have prepared for this urban forum, we've taken seven cities from E7 um, countries to compare them to have a look at the trends. The um, categories are presented here in the slide. You can see the cities there. So the main idea is that there are 10 indicators that uh, cover all the aspects of city developments, and they help uncovering trends. This is the general city rating. As you see here, there are 10 main indicators, um, like uh, uh, technolo um, technological uh, uh, awareness or development, um, uh, in intellectual capital. You can see Moscow taking uh, the second place here. But if we take a look at the general scoring, you can see that there are three leaders here, uh, Beijing, Moscow, and Mexico, and 
there are four other cities that are a little bit behind. They are within the same group, but they're slightly behind in their development. Speaking about Moscow, just I think I'll give a couple of comments and then we'll move on to Q&A. So some interesting things. As you see in the slide, the first indicator, intellectual capital and innovations, Moscow is taking the first place. If there is one statement that all the economists agree on, it is this. The, the basis of social and economic development is education and innovations. And naturally, Moscow is the leader here um, uh, before Beijing and all the rest. But that's uh, what I can say about intellectual capital. There is yet another interesting indicator. Uh, it is called uh, City as the uh, uh, center of gravitation. Moscow took second place here uh, with Beijing taking the first place. But it's just two scores difference. But anyway, if we take a deeper look into the research, we can see that Moscow is leading in terms of um, uh, air uh, connections, number of uh, hotel rooms, etc. Uh, technological uh, preparedness. So speaking about technologies, um, technologies become uh, a key point of develop, uh, of development, and there is only one difference, uh, one score difference between Moscow and uh, Beijing. We can have a look uh, in more detail in the report. And Moscow has very good indicators there. Of course, uh, transportation infrastructure is very important for city development. And we uh, we have observed already a good uh, development in this area. Despite the fact that Moscow takes third place here, it's important that there are two key indicators like public transportation and public transportation uh, uh, accessibility. It, uh, here, the Moscow was the leader. You can have a look at more details in the report. This is important. And maybe to conclude, I'll cover an important indicator. It's economic influence. Um, Beijing was the leader here, and of course, it attracts a lot of investment. But Moscow took the second part, uh, second place here. I think it doesn't make much sense to uh, uh, speak about each of the indicators. I wanted to cover the main highlights here, and I think we are prepared to reply to questions. So, welcome. Sorry, I cannot hear the question. Please, she needs. I have two questions. How can you assess intellectual level of development, and how Moscow was able to take the second place uh, from transportation development point of view? If it presents itself a very uh, issue, uh, so yeah, we we are able to answer. So go ahead. When you look at each one of these variables or categories, you need to look really at them as a collective. So, for example, in intellectual capital, uh, where Moscow <coughs> does well in terms of some of these variables, it does well in in terms of the percentage of population with higher education degrees. It does well in terms of an ideal classroom size. Where it doesn't do well, for example, uh, is in terms of the research of the top universities compared, for example, to Sao Paulo that has better university research. Also in terms of the achievement of the students in math and science, um, Beijing has better scores. <coughs> so when you take this, this collective, you have to understand for each one of these categories, how the variables break down and how each one of the cities performs well 
or not so well in, in, in this specific area. So that's for the intellectual capital and innovation. The other area that you've asked about is transportation and infrastructure. And basically, uh, in infrastructure, for example, Moscow has a very good public transportation system in terms of its coverage. Where it doesn't do well is in terms of the housing that it has. Uh, conversely, Beijing has very good housing, but it doesn't do very well in terms of, uh, for example, the, the level of construction activities that the city has. So you really need not only to focus on the category as a whole, but to look deeper into the individual performance areas. And it is all about understanding what is your strength and build on them, and what are your weaknesses to try to have the policies and the programs that would allow you to correct them. I hope this answers your question. And one final comment. All of these cities has, have very bad traffic. So, you know, the fact that they compare favorably to each other doesn't mean that the traffic is good. <laughs> Any other questions on the indicators? You were saying that these countries, uh, this this uh, these countries are going to come to to the fore and will leave the um, uh, G seven countries behind. So, do, do you think uh, Moscow has a chance of becoming a an absolute leader here? report and the study, we have looked at how employment and the GDP per capita will evolve from 2013 to 2025. And when we look at these cities or countries as a group, it is amazing because the growth rates are all between 3 and 6 percent. And you compare this to the developed economies where it's going to be consistently less than 1 percent. Now, what does this mean in terms of creating more jobs or actually improving the GDP per capita to enhance the economic conditions for the citizens living in, in these cities? Uh, Moscow is actually going to be uh, a little bit stable in this because it's already starting from a relatively higher GDP per capita. Yeah. Whereas a lot of the other cities, when you look at the GDP per capita, for example, in Moscow, it's going to go from 32,000 to 46,000 per capita. Other cities like Mumbai has less than 5,000 US dollars per capita, and it's going to go to 9.3%. Uh, but Moscow is the highest city that will achieve the highest GDP per capita when you look at this group together. If you allow me to add uh, something that uh, was mentioned by Hazem, uh, we, we have uh, two parts to our report. Uh, a report for 2013 and a forecast uh, until 2025. Uh, and uh, pages 22 to 23 of the report show that if we take GDP, um, uh, either general GDP or GDP per capita, it, it proves that Moscow has good chances. It's connected with the fact uh, that uh, population growth in China uh, is uh, 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 the, the rate of it is very high. So that that what determines this uh, situation. As for other aspects, probably it is about mostly what is going to be the focus of cities' policies, whether the areas that have to be improved uh, are going to be uh, improved. In some areas, there, uh, there is f faster improvement. Oh, I don't know how the so-called competitors are going to act, but uh, we, we can see the uh, good promises here for our growth. 
Yes, please. Could you please say how how did you determine the specific indicators to be included into the big category? Like culture, cultural activity, uh, why why this uh, indicator was included in some certain group, and what was the uh, ratio of these uh, ratio of these indicators uh, within the group, the category? Thank you. The, the report is based on the methodology that we use for the global report. And the idea here is that we are looking at all different aspects that define a good quality of life for citizens, that attracts businesses as well in terms of ease of doing business, and also talent. And with respect to the cultural vibrancy of any city, there is a very important uh, impact that this has on attracting uh, and retaining global talent. We have found that cities, for example, that have created uh, a lot of cultural attractions and things, you know, that uh, restaurants, museums, events, and all of these things, that is part of what we call the soft infrastructure. There is the hard infrastructure, the roads, and, you know, all of these things that you see physically, but there is also a softer element that translates to how vibrant and how culturally simulating the city is. And that has been proven to be uh, almost in direct correlation with uh, innovation and creativity in a city, how much cultural activity there is as well. So a small thing to precise. I wanted just to understand whether that means that any parameter, any sub-parameter, have been chosen basically on the common sense or there are some mathematical models that indicate that uh, demographically or the adaptivity to life are the most important and the density and the load on the uh, roads is the highest. Uh, so what's the method? The way that we're doing this is that each one of these variables has an equal weight, okay? So they are uh, weighted equally in our methodology. And what we do is we get the raw score data and then we normalize it so that we rank the cities. So uh, that is uh, the way we do it and the, at the end of the, um, of the report there is an exact definition of each variable in terms of uh, where it comes from and what do we mean by it. And we have been using this methodology now for five years. And what's very interesting uh, is sometimes you could be performing very well in a category. Um, and I give the example uh, last year when I was here in the Moscow Urban Forum, I was having breakfast with the deputy mayor for Stockholm. Stockholm was leading in intellectual capital and innovation in our global report. However, when you look at some of the lead indicators, those indicators that predict how you will do in a few years, like how the students were doing in math and science, it wasn't doing very well. So the fact that you are leading today, if you are weak in some of the variables that would predict how you do in the future, is already an alarming thing to look at. Some more questions, please. Um, in the absence of additional questions, uh, I'd like to make the comment again, which I always make. Um, rankings, indicators, and methodologies Everybody can come up with their own. What's really important is to understand what's behind the numbers, what are the policies that have created positive performance in some of the cities, 
and what is the lack of policies that have resulted in poor performance in some of the areas, and to learn between these cities not only as a group of emerging uh, economies, but also not to forget that even though, for example, in some of these categories, maybe Beijing is leading or uh, Moscow is leading, it is not only the case that they should compare to each other, but they should compare themselves to London, to New York, to Stockholm. They do have common characteristics, and that's why we did this report, because they're growing at a higher rate, they need improvements in infrastructure, they need to invest in uh, the factors that would attract foreign direct investment a lot more than the so-called more developed cities. But we shouldn't forget at the end of the day that this group of cities need to improve, for example, their traffic congestion. They need to improve their health systems. So it is not uh, the message that we're trying to put here to get lost in the numbers and the rankings, but to look what's behind the numbers and the policies and to take this as a platform for improvement and enhancement. Uh, I totally agree with you, Hazem, and, well, the devil in the de is in the detail, so I invite you to the Hall E, where Hazem will make a more detailed presentation on this report, and you will have uh, first-hand information from representatives of Mexico, China, and Brazil on how they see this ranking. Uh, they can give you their feedback on this uh, on this report, what kind of problems they face and what's behind the figures we are presenting. Thank you.